Hey everybody, welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast again. Today we're going to talk about anxiety and depression again, but we're going to talk about some coping tools that may help you or someone you know. So let's talk about it. You are watching the Beyond Sunday podcast. Yeah, so we've already talked about anxiety and depression on its own. So if you haven't seen that episode, check it out. We also did one on therapy. Uh, With this, let's really talk about what can we do Mm -hmm. with anxiety and depression? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that can help? From your perspective, Mm -hmm. what are some of the strategies you like to use with your clients? Sure. Okay, so if we're strictly talking clinical. Yes. Yes. I'll go there. Uh, So strictly talking clinical, first and foremost, find a therapist who deals with anxiety. Yeah. Again. Like as a specialty? As a specialty. Because, again, anxiety can be from a multitude of things, Mm -hmm. trauma being one of them. And if if you have to go into trauma, some therapists are not versed in that Mm -hmm. and it can be harmful. So you want to find someone who does EMDR or some other. I was going to ask what the clarification is. Yeah, yeah. So EMDR is like the scientifically proven one to help. Okay. Okay. and they have to be certified in that. Yeah. That's yeah. very important. Um, yeah, trauma is a messy one to deal with, and you mm-hmm. want to find a therapist that knows what they're doing okay. in that area. So there's that. Um, and then, so as far as, like, ask your question again, you know, baby brain. What are your favorite strategies, strategies. to use with okay. people? Yeah. Okay, so with anxiety and depression, some of them can overlap. Some of them are different. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. I'll start with anxiety. Okay. Um, if you're going more of the panic route with mm-hmm. anxiety, because yeah. you can have someone who has kind of that functioning anxiety and they don't really get panic attacks. Yeah. Some people have such bad anxiety that it does lead to some mm-hmm. panic attacks. Mm-hmm. So um, <clears throat> if you're in that panicky type state and you're getting panic attacks, obviously get some help. But yeah. some stuff to help right then and there to like yeah. get, get out of it a little bit is anything that would make you use your brain so okay and what i mean by that is this this reasoning center and so things like counting okay like, like these are super simple and it's not yeah. an exhaustive list i'm going to give a few yes there are a million different things you can okay. do for this so um counting trying to say your name backwards you or um spell it backwards okay mm. these are all they sound so weird but if you're in a panicky state you cannot do that with your prefrontal cortex offline. So it brings it back. Interesting. I would have okay. never thought of that. Yeah. These are like very tangible. Yeah. Like just do yes. it right now. That one you might need help with with another person to kind of go, no, keep going. Keep it. telling me because if you're in a panic, you're not going to want to do that. Yeah. Right. Um, so and, and I can say that from personal experience that got me out of a panic attack once. Wow. That's so that's like a tangible yeah. one. Yeah. Different things like drink some water, eat some food. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, like if we go way back to ancestral stuff, like yeah. that, not to say that in a weird way, but mm-hmm. like um, we're kind of conditioned for fight or flight response. Yeah. And if we're eating or drinking, our brain goes, oh, I'm not being chased by a tiger. Yeah. I'm eating something, right? So you won't find animals when they're tigers just sopping up water in in the lake you know that doesn't happen so your brain kind of goes oh okay and it will calm down Mm -hmm. you want to get some cold water too because okay like you can shock your system kind of a little it kind of wakes you up a little bit yeah putting ice on your wrists and on the back of your neck the again these are all just like yeah very quick fixes they're not going to heal you of panic no. right but they're to some coping things to get you in a right space to actually be able to talk about it yeah not be in this ah get me out of here right and state. like in this podcast we are talking about tools to yes help yes. like coping tools we're yes. not coping does not replace healing nope. it does not replace therapy no, no, it does no. not replace god. god it does not replace yeah yeah no. community nothing this episode's this more is, clinical I'm yes understanding. that's okay. what i love so. about even just going to therapy yes. in general is mm-hmm. the you're the, just it's getting giving tools. me tools mm-hmm. that i can use on my own when i'm in that moment and i don't have someone mm-hmm. to talk with me yes so mm-hmm. yeah yeah so that's more of the panicky stuff and again okay. you can easily like when you're not in the panic obviously yes I'm sure you can find those resources yeah. in a lot of places. So there's a bunch more yeah. that you can do. Um, a big one is a grounding tool. And okay. it's basically you do like five things you can see, four things you can hear, um, three things you can touch, hmm. two things you can smell, and one thing you so can So your taste. senses. Bring your senses into and it. And you're just telling them. You're just 
Mm. I can see yeah. this. I can hear Yeah, this. and like say it out loud. Mm-hmm. I can see the bricks. I can see the what I can see beyond Sunday. Yeah. I can see like because again, you cannot do that and be aware of your surroundings for real and be in panic at mm. the same time. Okay. Um and so that brings you back down and you're grounded again and you can like oh, you sort of like fall out of yeah. it a bit. That's um, cool. Yeah. And that's one again you can use on your own if you've done it enough. Like yeah, it's like summary. practice it. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to think of those things when you're alone yeah. and you're like freaking out. But yeah. if you've done it enough, it can be muscle memory. Yeah. Or you can tell someone you love how As to help is. you with that. Yeah. yeah. And who you trust. And they can be like, oh, I'm in a panic. Like, can you help me with that thing? And yeah. then they can go, okay, and teach you the prompts mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Um. And so I've done that with my husband before. And Yeah. He's yeah. he's helped. Me. He's like got a secondhand degree. I'm like, yeah, help me. That's I'm crazy. Amazing. <laughs> this is what so, to do when this happens. Yeah. 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 So um, that's a huge one for anxiety, even okay. like more just it doesn't even have to be a panic attack and can be that like I'm just feeling really like elevated yeah. and, and heightened and my heart is racing for some reason. And so, like, you're not like losing your mind when yeah. you all of a sudden somebody tells you that your deadline's in an hour that's and right yeah you're like panic oh my yeah. gosh <laughs> come back down yeah to yeah. come back down from whatever do that grounding thing that's really helpful okay. um and then for for anxiety and depression so i'm going to overlap okay. that one because it's mm-hmm. for both and then okay. i'll go into depression yeah we so the word of god talks about like meditate on mm-hmm. my word day and night and so meditation can be misconstrued okay i don't mean yeah. eastern meditation i mean the way the lord's saying it yeah mm-hmm. to think and focus on what is good right holy pure all those things yeah another piece of the word of god and how i think it's cbt but mm-hmm. um <laughs> being able to sit and quiet and be quiet and still with the lord yeah is going to be so helpful for mm-hmm. both anxiety and depression For anxiety, it helps, like, kind of calm our nervous system down. Mm -hmm. This one is very hard, though. I'm not going to lie to you. It's helpful. It's Your brain's running all these places. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes. There are a lot of apps. um, And when we talk about, like, different resources or whatever, there's a Calm app. There's Mm -hmm. a bunch of other ones um, where you could actually turn it on, and it will lead you through, like, a body scan, we call it. Yeah. And um, because, you know, when we're kind of out there, we need someone to kind of help us regulate. Yeah. I've done the body scan uh-huh. with my therapist and I think about that one a lot. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah. But what I mean, I don't know if your therapist has told you this, mm-hmm. but so much so many times I'll say you're going to wander. You're going to yeah. go somewhere else. Don't mm-hmm. get angry with yourself. Just come back. Yeah. Every time. And you're probably going to go over there. Loop and back, back around. And over, you're going to be like a little mouse going back yeah. and forth. But that's OK. Yeah. You're just training your brain to focus on rest. Yep. Mm-hmm. And focus on your body. It's very similar to the grounding thing. Yeah. Because it's making you focus on your actual physical mm. parts. And I've used that one when feels. I can't sleep where I'm trying to go like, OK, I'm shutting mm-hmm. down my eyes. I'm mm-hmm. shutting yeah. down my, my cheek, jo- mm-hmm. my jaw bone and things like Going when I was going, down. when I had a lot of anxiety and stuff and it yeah. would hit me at night, I got, what was the app? Headspace. Yeah, uh-huh. that's a good one. Mm-hmm. And like, it did exactly, it's like, Walk you imagine it, this and the like. The lights turning mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. Right. Or yeah, mm-hmm. the body scan or like, it have you just start counting. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. like, mm-hmm. those exact mm-hmm. things that you were talking about. Sneaky. Yeah. I would have They're never sneaky. thought that they had a real mm-hmm. purpose. Yeah. Like, like those things. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, well, I don't need that because I don't want to yeah. count. They, I, I know. Count. Yeah. And again, mm-hmm. a lot of these, if you're in anxiety or depression, you're not going to totally want to do them. Yeah. Right. You have to just choose to do this one because yeah. it, it's good for you and it will help. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time, the motivation, even in anxiety, even though that's not a ton of the um, symptomology, it will be there and you will yeah. not want to do the things that help um because we feel stuck and we get in fight flight there's actually more there's fight flight yeah. freeze or fawn and a lot of people don't know about all of them but mm-hmm. right. um we get in that freeze mode which can be anxiety yep. or depression it just depends on how your mm-hmm. nervous mm-hmm. system responds mm-hmm. and um we can't do anything we feel so stuck and yeah. we can't move and so we have to go i am moving anyway and um so i'm not saying like fake it till you make it yeah or yeah do the thing but so sometimes, making a conscious decision. Yeah, and that's where we can get people involved yeah. because sometimes we just can't seem to move on our own and we can have someone come in and go, I remember you teaching me how to do this. Like, yes. let's do this thing. Let's do a body scan. I'll walk you through it or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. awesome. Uh, what What other things are oh, there either right. for yeah. anxiety and depression or just depression? Yeah. So um, 
I think a big one for both is the meditating on truth. Mm -hmm. So really, um, I like to do something called, I mean, I call it, uh, what do I call it? It's in my head, but I'm telling you, my brain just like doesn't really work anymore. Um, But I'll call it right now for lack of my memory, just like a, um, like word meditation. And so what I'll do, what I mean by that is I'll find a verse in the Bible that brings me peace or, or that like talks about the Lord's promises to Mm -hmm. me and I'll write it down and I'll literally like break it apart to like each word. And this is like a meditating on yeah. the word because we're outside of our circumstance now. We're not yep. focusing yep. on the fearful thing or the the thing that's bringing us a lot of pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, we're tuning into God's word, but in an active way so that we don't like wander, wander, as, much. wander yeah. as much. So it's like, I wish I could draw it and have people see it, but yeah. it's like, so like for um, the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear. Let's just yeah. say that. Yeah. One. Um, you'd literally go and find like the bigger words like Lord. And I literally will go on the dictionary yeah. and be like, what does the dictionary say the attribu- attributes of Lord are? It's usually like <laughs> the owner of something, the mm-hmm. like all this thing. And I will literally like pick the word apart on each one that like matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I can read it in a whole different way where it's like, oh my gosh, the Lord is Lord over my life. Yeah. And he has delivered a thing to me mm-hmm. that is peace, basically. And I can just like yeah. sit in that. Anyway, so that will help. A lot of people don't do that one, but I love to do that. And that has yeah. helped me so much in both anxiety okay. and depression. Because Kind of slows you down and gets you thinking mm-hmm. about God. And the other one is more of like a hope bringer. Okay. So that's what's missing in depression is that yeah. piece of hope. Yeah. that, And you're like, oh, yeah. I'm not alone. And like the Lord is there for me. And he didn't give me this spirit. He actually gave me power, love and a sound mind. So let's look at that one. And it can help. I'm not saying it's a bringer of like, oh, yeah, everything is fixed. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Dude, there is life. You don't know what the Lord will do. You do not know. (laughs) There is life in him. And so, yeah, who knows? But either way, it's not going to do a disservice to you. Yeah. (laughs) It's going to bring you closer to him and closer to like actually coming to your space because in both anxiety and depression there can be like a dissociation that can happen Mm -hmm. um and one is from depression because we kind of pull ourselves out and anxiety can make us so overwhelmed that our brain just kind of shuts down yeah and can't cope so so we go into that dissociation Mm -hmm. and that meditating on the lord is like and that way keeps Mm -hmm. us focused keeps us grounded keeps us like okay (sighs) Here's truth. So yeah. um, th- those are that. some things that I like to do for both of those together. Yeah. Going into depression. Okay. This one's harder, again, because we kind of just want to sit there and right. veg. And anything that's good for us, we're like, yes, nope, yeah. I don't want to. Even though I know that it's going to help me. Yeah. Even though I know that it's helped me last time. Yeah. Even, right. All right. those things will go through our heads. And um, so in order to move, we just have to go... Mm-hmm. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to care about myself do right now. Something and I'm just gonna, myself. I'm just gonna do it, and I'm only gonna do it for like 30 seconds. Yep. So like mm. even time frames are really helpful okay. in my experience. Yeah, you only have to do it for 20 seconds. Okay, because part of depression and anxiety is that feeling of overwhelm. Yeah. yeah. So if we feel like we have to sit and meditate for an hour, mm-hmm. we're not doing it. No. We're not doing it. So if we go, I can sit and meditate or sit and do these things for five minutes or even 20 seconds. Then you kind of can gain some confidence a little in your ability. And you go, I could do 20 seconds next time, but you might want to do a little more. Yeah. That's how we thaw from depression. Mm -hmm. So it's like this thawing where over time we kind of go, okay, I could take two steps instead of one. Okay, I can take three steps instead of two. Yeah. And so... um, Yeah. And finding the joy in life. Now, Mm -hmm. this is like a gratefulness tactic. And I don't mean this positive thinking, like (laughs) everything's fine all the time until you believe it. Yeah. That might work for some people. It did not work for me. I don't know. Me either. Um, No. (laughs) But what does work is actually truthfully finding things to be grateful of. So um, grabbing a piece of paper and going well i guess i'm thankful that this blanket's warm right now yeah and i'm talking like 
dumb little things yeah. that you might be grateful for in that moment because you're not going to find big giant things that you're no. grateful for because you don't feel you anything. don't feel it at all yeah but you might be grateful that the ch- piece of chocolate you ate yesterday was just phenomenal yeah right like that kind of thing i'm talking about that so these are now. very <laughs> <laughs> so going to that place and being like well i'm grateful like uh, my nail polish looks good i guess yeah i'm mm-hmm. grateful for that and like until you get to the bigger ones yeah. and you will if yeah. you keep going with that and so gratefulness is a huge antidote to depression and when you can and you feel like you can choose this get your booty outside yeah. <laughs> the lord did not create us to yes. sit indoors get in nature. <laughs> you need some vitamin d on your skin yeah. you need the grass under your feet you need the like even like getting this one i tell my clients to do all the time and it's they don't want to do it but yeah look toward the sun in the morning yep there's like outside some your like mm-hmm. body and your rim yes cycle and your it helps with your melatonin rhythm. yeah all of it and it really can help with depression and i'm not talking about like staring into the sun and yeah. blind yourself just toward it with bare eyeballs yep. yeah. no glasses no sunglasses um in a safe way and just kind of get that into your eyes mm-hmm. um huh. even Again, different supplements that can help and talk to your doctor about it. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a doctor. Um, but vitamin D and magnesium, like I said, can be yeah, vitamin a D. game changer for those kind of things. Um, even go get your mineral levels checked mm. Yeah, so that your doctor can say, yeah, you need these. Um, yeah, Because that can be just a game changer to the point where you can do the things that are helpful. Mm-hmm. And I had about a depression after my son was born. Found yeah. out that my vitamin D was like... 12 and it's supposed to be like in the 80s yeah it's supposed so, to be way high so and like it was a game changer for yeah. me that was my problem and so yep um yeah so finding ways to get out in nature go sit and put your feet in some water like yeah watch hmm. nature there's something about being outside for depression specifically mm-hmm. that can be just like oh I agree with that. The world is kind of okay right here in this Yes. Right? Like, maybe it's not out there. Yeah. And here's a... (laughs) I'm the queen of unpopular opinions um, that nobody's going to like, but get off of social media. Yeah. Uh, That is huge right now. It just sends you that direction. Yeah. There's so many controversial things that are going on that make us frustrated when people don't agree or that make us really, really, really angry or really sad or really... Like, we just are getting really irritated, but no one's yeah. actually talking, like, face-to-face well. Yes. And so everyone's just bantering and, oh, sh- I can't believe she said this and he yeah. said that. And then we're just seeing all the garbage in the world and all the, the worst really, really rough things. And I'm not saying, like, be ignorant and don't know about anything yeah. going on in the world, but, like, the binge social media where all you do is just scroll, 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 yeah. it is not helpful for our mental no. health. So, yeah, I think it's contributing a lot to anxiety and depression. And yeah, get off of that. Even the phone, like, again, this is much more of a crunchy thing. But um, staring at a blue light screen all the time yeah. is not good for your eyeballs and your melatonin levels and all that stuff. So, yeah, even like with depression, right, you have a trouble sleeping. Yeah. Try getting off your phone two hours before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. Very hard for people with depression because that's the only kind of connection yeah. yep. that they're willing to have with people. But it's a choice that is like, okay, let's just see if this works. Yeah. And just try it for a few nights. And so see if it makes a difference. Yeah. So these are all like, again, I could say like so many more. Yeah. But for sake of time, those are some tangible like ones use? for right now. And obviously go to the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. But, but yeah, we're talking more clinical. So. What are some of the ones I know that we've used and you probably used yourself too what are some of the coping tools that you've used that have helped that you've liked or some of your favorites um the one where you like have to do the senses Mm -hmm. yeah i just did that recently too i was in a situation Mm -hmm. where i was all of a sudden it was like just panic and Mm -hmm. i excused myself i had to go to the went to the bathroom and i literally like sat on the floor with my hands on the cold tile mm, good uh-huh. yeah and i was like because we had i had just been to therapy and we had just talked about it that's the mm-hmm. only reason yep. <laughs> i had this you in were, my you brain were prepared and had yeah. it in your arsenal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 so i like, put my hands on the cold tile mm-hmm. I'm like okay i see mm-hmm. this i see this yeah yes and i was able to like sit there mm-hmm. 
breathe deep again yeah. and I was able to go about my evening yeah. like because yeah. your brain comes back online right you can it was actually just use this up here like mm-hmm. yep I was able to be like this is not that mm-hmm. I'm okay I'm safe yeah You're okay, and I yeah. was able to be fine like it worked that's awesome um yeah so that was a big one and then I might not get this right okay but <laughs> Uh, what's the big nerve in your neck? Uh, There's a vagus nerve. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. My therapist showed me how to reset mm-hmm. my That's vagus huge. nerve. Sorry. I didn't, and know I, that <laughs> in there. I didn't put that in my talk, but yeah. 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 That's cool. And like, I You're going to talk about it. Every Katrina day. has to show yeah. us how to do it. Okay, yeah. guys. I well, need to know. Okay. Well, I can. There's a piece of the vagus nerve. I'll give you a really simple one. Okay. This is for more anxiety when it's uh, bad. Hum deep into your throat. That's a big one. Like, I know that sounds okay. super weird, but mm. your vagus nerve, the biggest part of it runs through your thymus right here. Okay. And so the, the deep groans like that, that gurgling water. Mm. Gurgling. Singing. Okay. Huge. They're huge for that. The throat action. That's why you feel better anyway, when you Sorry to interrupt that's you. That's cool. Right? Yeah. That was no, really, really yeah, good. but yeah, she showed me something like that. Mm-hmm. It's okay. There's a billion but, other yeah. ways to mess with that, but those are easy Right. Ones. And like the way like with humming mm-hmm. or even like mine is with like y- your eyes and your head sure and mm-hmm. like you have to really concentrate on yeah it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so even that like takes you out of the uh-huh. whatever you're thinking or doing yep. so mm-hmm. those are two that that really i mean really like yeah yeah i remember i've actually remembered yeah the biggest yes. nerve, <laughs> know, the the thing, biggest you nerve will mess them. you up yeah yeah you hear them but you go do am i gonna remember to do this right totally. i know i've talked to my therapist before about like i feel and i i have both anxiety and depression um i feel good a lot of times about like i can calm myself down from the anxiety of like we've done the one where i call it like safe space where she like yeah you know, I and I have two like images of a place where it's safe. There's no mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. influences. And so like one of them was from a trip I had in Nicaragua. And we we're like in the middle of this uh, canyon um, and there's mountains all around and there's no light anywhere except for the stars. And it just mm. feels huge. And so a That's lot of times I'll just like one. close my eyes and I could put myself right there. Yeah. Yeah. And that just helps calm me down or like uh, kind of like the body check but mm-hmm. uh instead of going piece by piece asking myself like what is happening in my body what mm. am i feeling why mm-hmm. what am i afraid of and like going yeah. making myself answer those questions because i get in the kind of like yeah and see like i don't know what it yeah. is but i don't feel right jenna that's so good it's it's, it's a because it's a good one we as a society we've kind of gone into two camps either we go feelings don't matter yep and who cares about them get over it suck it up buttercup yeah or we're over here in the other camp of feelings are the only thing that matter <laughs> and now my emotions are god yeah running me yeah. running my life right we got to go back in yep. the middle and, and go, then the what asking, are they is it true yeah. is this real yeah and so the anxiety ones i feel like are easy sometimes because it's mm-hmm. like i can slow it down but i've told my therapist like i feel like the depression one's the hard when i'm in a it low is. day how do i get out of it and like there was a time when mine was really bad that uh i was struggling to uh I don't know how to say this, like, shower. Yeah. Like, I would go, yeah. like, 10 days, uh-huh. and I'm like, I haven't showered. Or even, like, two or three days, and it's like, I just want to shower because I don't want to be this person yeah. that's, like, <laughs> but I feel so low that it feels, like, this huge thing. So and she'd common, be yeah. like, because uh, it's like, well, you have to have mm-hmm. curly hair, and it's a whole process, and it will take time. And she's like, what if you just make your goal that, you're going to turn the water on today. Yes. And it's like, <laughs> these are That's these like tiny what you were saying, things, like 20 right? seconds. <laughs> tiny motivations. Yeah. Or like, we're going to mm-hmm. sit under the water. You're mm-hmm. not going to, mm-hmm. you're not going to shower. Your hair. Yeah. yeah. But you just like these steps, uh-huh. but getting outside, taking a walk. My, my hammock is my like, mm-hmm. I've been Everything on that hammock right and it world. is it's good. a good one. The Lord meets me in that hammock yep. when I'm well, at your house. <laughs> and then and then like when we hit winter and it's like, man, I, I don't really want to go take mm-hmm. a walk outside and it's cold and whatever. Um, I found that like turning off the lights in my bathroom and like mm-hmm. bubble bath with like candles and I'll play like instrumental worship yeah. music and I can just like sit there and I don't have to think about anything yeah. and I want to take a bath so bad right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, that's very that, good self care. Things that just kind of like Mm-hmm. Stop, and that's what I found that actually helps with the depression yeah, one. That's mm-hmm. cool. A little choice that's good. Yep, that's but, huge for depression. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I think a lot of the things that you talked about, 
uh, someone could use to walk mm-hmm. someone else through it. Yeah. When we're dealing with someone, you know, whether it's a spouse or a friend or family mm-hmm. member or even somebody that we just know at church, what can we do or say mm-hmm. and what things should we not say? Oh, this is a great question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think so much of the time people who've not struggled with actual or or people who think they have but they actually yeah. have yeah. never dealt with clinical anxiety or depression yes. maybe just i'm a freaked out a little bit or i'm a little sad and they yeah. think that's an everybody deals with some level yeah. of anxiety yeah. or depression at times but oh it's yeah. not yeah that yeah. yeah and so with that i think sometimes they're quick to like give an answer yeah that puts you in a place where they don't a person who's struggling doesn't want to listen to mm-hmm. you anymore yeah so we have to approach it with empathy okay yes. like this is the biggest like banner that i will say is empathy is your key in yeah mm. if you do nothing else empathy is huge and this i mean the lord talks about it, it says mourn with those who mourn yep. weep with those who weep and yes. i don't know what else is empathy if that's not it yeah like, that is sitting with someone and it's not in that, it's yeah. not saying you're fine get over it yeah <laughs> that will never help somebody i like yep. i don't know who needs to hear this right now but you will never help your friend or family member with yeah. anxiety or depression you're by telling them you're fine, get over it. It's okay. You're like okay. what yep. do you have you're to You're gonna be, be okay. About, yeah. Your life Come is out. so great. You're good. Yeah. Look at all the things you have in front of you. Like those can be very good reminders once yep. you're in and they trust you, but you've got to get in first. Yeah. And, and that's part of why a lot of people do see therapists because yeah. we do that. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times our friends and family judge us first. And yep. mm-hmm. so, also, the so, yeah. Best video in the world on empathy is the Brene Brown mm. empathy video that I showed. Derek was shown that by our therapist mm-hmm. uh, mm. when we were in couples counseling. And that made all the difference because it clicked. Yeah. It yeah. finally clicked. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And not everybody, not every man is like, this is not a stereotype, but like, men were built differently yeah. in their brains and so a lot of times they go to fixing or yep um and anybody can go to that yeah and our it's, it's hard to, to see someone you mm-hmm. love yeah. in depression yeah. or in anxiety and mm-hmm. you want to fix it. you want totally. to it's so out bad. of love but it's not helpful yes so try not to fix and try more to sit with yeah. mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean you have to be all depressed too it yeah. means sit with them so they know they're not alone until mm-hmm. they can you can help them up and they can mm-hmm. walk with you yep. and that's really hard for some Instead people it, it gets really tiring for some yes. people and it gets like old they can be like F- just get over it already yeah i yeah. thought we dealt with this you're fine mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and again going back and having like the heart of jesus with yeah. that sometimes people really do need just like a buck up like you're gonna oh, be yeah, okay yeah. yeah and you know gets them out of that spot for a second but Sometimes that is the opposite of what they need to hear. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to seek God, seek, you know, counsel from Mm -hmm. people who, you know, whether it's your pastor or whether you Mm -hmm. have a therapist, but being able to talk to them about how can I help this person Mm -hmm. and get feedback and guidance on that. One of my friends, she's so good about this, but like when I come and I'm like anxious about something or like freaking out, my blood pressure's going up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I'll be like spouting about the situation or whatever. And she goes, how does that make you feel? Yeah. Now I have to come up with an answer. <laughs> Very I don't therapist-y. know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Think I'm sad. Like, I don't yeah. know. Or whatever. Yeah, you get to the root of she your actual spiral. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Questions are just game being, changers. Right. Yeah. Instead of just being like, why are you freaking out? Or yeah. like, yeah. calm down. Or, yeah. Because then you're going to go on the defense or you're right. going to feel unheard. So it's just like, Okay, how yeah. is this making you feel? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Na- naturally, we're kind of programmed, again, like I said, to fix. And so yeah. that comes out usually naturally, like, calm down or stop or it's going to be okay or yeah, just look at this verse or whatever. Yeah. And I'm not saying the word of God isn't always true and always helpful. Yeah. It's just in that moment, they're not thinking right. Oh, so sure. we, we have to go into it. And I love that she just asked you that question um, because we have to sit in a place of understanding the person. And mm-hmm. when we feel misunderstood, forget that noise. Yeah, like that right. person is no longer a help. And now you're a clinging gong. And yeah. you know what the Lord says about that. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that this is a good place to end this part of the conversation. Yeah. There's still so much more we could talk about. But mm-hmm. if you haven't checked out our other episodes on this therapy and anxiety and depression series, yeah. check those out. And 
we'll catch you guys in the next one. Comment down below and we'll we'll keep the conversation going. Thanks, everybody. Bye. This has been another episode of the Beyond Sunday podcast. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe.